The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Washington Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's gonna go. It's a blue. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. It is semifinal week here on the Winds of New England. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy as uh, we are ever closer to getting our third qualifier for the Tournament of Champions. Paul Berger has won the first two weeks of this series. Yeah, third qualifier for the Tournament of Champions, and somebody's trying to make it three in a row, and mm. that's uh, Paul Berger, and he was on a mission when he came back. <laughs> All right, let's meet the two bowlers and set you up for today's program. Our number five seed is from Hopedale, Massachusetts. He's trying to get to the Tournament of Champions for the seventh straight year from Hopedale, Massachusetts, Paul Berger. Okay, and Paul comes in averaging 127, has a high triple of 500, but it's 382, I believe, is his, <laughs> his numbers here. 668 for a roll-off score. That's right. Uh, in the last two weeks, Paul has thrown an identical 382s, first to beat Bob Whitcomb, and then last week to knock off Stu Bergman. So today he goes for three in a row, and he will face our number two seed from Beverly, Massachusetts. That's Mark Gregory. Okay, Mark comes in averaging 127 also, 187 for high single. His roll-off score getting right up there now at 694. Bonus money opportunities for both bowlers, and we'll have our bonus ball contest as well as the end of the, at the end of the show. We had a, another winner last week. We're hot right now, three, three winners in the last six or seven weeks. We will be back to start this match between Paul Berger and Mark Gregory right after these messages. Don't go away. All right, down to three bowlers here in this series on Stars and Strikes. So far, it's been all Paul Berger. Wins over Bob Whitcomb and then Stu Bergman. So today, he faces Mark Gregory in the semifinals. The winner of this match comes back next week to face our number, two, our number one seed, Glenn Shattuck, for the big enchilada and the trip to the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Paul Berger, ready to go and to start this match. Looking for his third win in a row. Oh, yes. A four horseman for a spare to start for Paul. Just barely touching the head pin and clearing the other three pins out as well for the first box, first mark, and first five fill. <laughs> One, three. Six, seven, and eight. Yes, yeah, two in a row. Sets himself up for some bonus money. Some pretty good shots there. Really was. Got the wood in the head pin at the same time. Mark Gregory now. Mark was with us back in the uh, first series of the season as the number five seed. He Won his first match, beating Peter Brooks, and then lost to Tom O'Brien back in October. Spare for Mark Gregory. And we're perfect so far. Three boxes, three marks, all spares. Big nine, Phil, to take the lead. And the second mark. Two spares each to start it off here. So chances for bonus money all around. 
Quick start, both bowlers. Paul Berger will throw first. And he'll have the one he started with, the four horsemen. But this time, he's the wood in between the two and the four, and it's really not at a good angle. Nope. Can't get the head pin out of there. Make it nine. 40 through three. Paul stands to the left side of the approach, somewhat unusual for a right-hander. And he's got the 2-4-6. Sounds easy enough. 2-4 <laughs> on the left-hand side, and the right is the 6, and it is... Oh! Oh, wow, right around it. <laughs> cut, cut that 2-pin in front of the 6. He can't believe it. He had to look back again to make sure the 6-pin was still there. He cut the 2-pin in front of the 6, and then it came off the sidekick and went behind. Watch it. I the, started, the two pin. I started to say, and it is easy. <laughs> right around it. Wow. Mark Gregory now with a chance for bonus money. And he leaves six also. Three, five, six, and ten. Cluster of four in the right hand corner for bonus money yes twenty five dollars for Mark Gregory and you get another look the bonus money of course from Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan Route 97 Main Street Salem New Hampshire come to Salem and save at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan and as long as Mark keeps this consecutive mark stretch going to get $25 each. Well, I don't think this one's going to be too easy, though. Unless he can somehow use the wood in the channel. 4, 7, 10. I think he's just got to go to the right side of the 4 pin into the 7 and hopefully get something off the wall. I'm going to try to split it. Ooh. Nope. Mark has the lead in the match. And it is an 11 pin lead right now. Thanks to those three consecutive marks to open the game. Half Worcester right for Paul. Three and a nine are cleared out of there. And three more. Paul Berger from Hopedale, Mass. Works as the Director of Corporate Purchasing for Stratus Computer. Does a lot of his bowling down at the Metro West lanes in Framingham, Mass. And Paul has the Four Horsemen again. Third time this game. If we we'll look back on the past weeks, sir, last two anyways, he's had that leave a lot. Mm -hmm. Not this time. He's one for three now. <laughs> Good batting average, but... And it's a nine. So, two opens for Paul Berger, leaving an opportunity for Mark Gregory to extend the lead here. Mark from Beverly, Massachusetts, does a lot of his bowling at the Beverly Bowlamat and in Amesbury at Lafayette Lanes. Mark is the mailroom coordinator for the Automobile Insurers Bureau of Massachusetts. Head pin hit, a little full. Same three pins Paul Berger shot at just a little while ago, and he cut the two pin around the six. Let's see what Mark does with it. Just a little bit too far, low. It's already picked up one in count. Could pick up another with one of these two. Does. Stretches the lead to 13. Will the toe and get it out? 
Sarah. For Mark overall, this is his seventh appearance in singles competition here on Stars and Strikes. He has a record of four and two to this point. Mark also appeared uh, in the 1994 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Won his first match. And we're going to have to have Cindy go down and uh, reset that piece of wood that uh, was left in the channel. I think she tried to roll it all the way through and got caught. So now that is taken care of and Mark Gregory will shoot at the 6, 7, and 10. And that's a good sportsmanship there for Mark Gregory because to leave that pin there actually would have been an advantage. Oh, absolutely. And it's nine. And it's 79 through six from our Gregory, as you see the scoreboard, 13 pin advantage. Paul Berger is straight through the middle. He actually got a bit of a break here. It's wow. still happening. That could have been a 1-5 punch out, and instead it's a, well, not really a spare leave with the way the wood is angled, but at least he's got a shot at it. More of a spare leave this way than he started out with. Yeah. Oh, yes. How about it? Nope. The wood cost him. And the 10. So Paul's gone five in a row without marking here. Both bowlers uh, opening up with two and three marks, respectively, and then it's been a drought ever since. Again through the center, and this time the spread eagle. Now well, maybe you'll make this one. <laughs> oh, get over there. Gave it a bit of a scare. It's a moral victory. If you can get the spread eagle and convert it into a 10, he does. So two 10 boxes for Paul Berger. Two more chances here for Mark Gregory to add to the lead. On, yeah. oh. oh my! How about that? Oh. <laughs> well, that is the five pin, although it's somewhere between the six and nine spot right now, I think. <laughs> one piece of wood hit it, the second one came, stood it right up, and walked it right across the lane. That'll be the spare. Mark number four. Let's watch that first ball again. Here comes the first piece and second piece right behind it, and they kind of twisted around and stood it right there. <laughs> Fourth mark for Mark. All spares. Haven't had a strike in this match as yet. Another pretty good looking first ball, but wow, not much to show. Five, seven, and eight. Now you just gotta go at the five pin. Hopefully you'll be a little bit to the right side and move it from, left, uh, from right to left into the eight and then finally the seven. Pretty close. Oh, wow. Put the five pin right between the seven and the eight, it appeared. This will put the lead up near 20 for Mark Gregory. 19, in fact, it'll be. With two boxes to go here in game one. Don't forget, next weekend, yes, it is the holiday weekend, but we keep right on going here on Stars and Strikes. Christmas Eve at noon, we'll have candle pin skins from the Londonderry Bowling Center. And then next Sunday, Christmas Day at noon, We'll have our championship match here on Stars and Strikes, so 
we'll have a little present for you of our own here for you to open next time. How Sunday. about that spare? Mike? Yes. Well, burger. Trying to finish with a couple. And yes. the strike on spare. Yeah, you got a chance for bonus, bonus money if you could throw a, another strike or a spare. First strike of the day for either bowler. And the chance for bonus here. No. Robbed of the bonus money, but Paul, I'm sure, is happy about the marks to pull him up to 125 for the first game. That's actually the best first game he's thrown in three weeks. Started with two, ended with two. Marks, that is. Mark Gregory will need to put a mark up here in the final two to keep the lead. Well, that was a big break with it. Eight pin falling down, and not only does it fall down, now it rolls up against the two pin. Yes, spare in the ninth. Five spares, Mark Gregory. So it appears that he will, in fact, retain the lead through this first game. Oh, big strike on spare for Mark Gregory. Take that, <laughs> says Mark. First strike for him. 135 plus two balls. In the pocket again. Looked well, like the same ball. <laughs> this time the 5-7. Now remember, if he makes this, it's for bonus money. It'll all depend on the wood, probably. Okay. Right tip, maybe? Um, or would you go actually, left side? I, I think, actually, I'd go left. Left, yeah. There you go. I'll take the 25. Okay, you can split <laughs> it with Mark Gregory. <laughs> $25 more in bonus money, and he maintains a 20-pin lead with a 145 for Mark Gregory in the opener to Paul Berger's 125. We'll be back in a minute on Stars and Strikes. Mark Gregory with a 20-pin lead to start game two. Four horsemen right for Mark. One, two, six, uh, one, three, six, and ten. Piece of wood now rolling up behind the three pin. And now rolling away, so Mark has to wait. And the spare. Tripping out the 10 pin in the corner. There you see just tripping that 10 pin. That's eight marks in 11 boxes for Mark Gregory. He already has $50 in bonus money. And he continues to fire and almost another strike on spare. The nine pin for two in a row? No, not this time. A little bit behind himself that time. There it is for the 10 box. 29 opening pair to start game two. Well, Berger down 20 and now facing a mark here in the first box. Paul really hasn't been behind that much the first two weeks. 
He was behind briefly in the early stages of game two, two weeks ago, to Bob Whitcomb. Oh, he converts it, I think. I don't oh, believe, do believe it. it. Oh, my. <laughs> Paul gave it the stamp. <laughs> Didn't work, though. I thought that was over for sure. And uh, Paul trailed briefly in the first two games, but not by many, single figures against Stu Bergman, and then put it away with a double strike early in game three. So he hasn't had a deficit this large. It's 29 right now. Pretty good mix on the thin hit. Seven pin left. Of course, missing the spare, and then the nine drop is, is your rule. That's right. <laughs> And there is that spare. Could have just easily been two in a row, but he has one to show for it. Mark Gregory now, right in the pocket. Oh. Great looking ball for Mark Gregory. Lane 32, very impressive strike. Of course, he threw the strike and he just got through missing the single. Cost mm. him $25 in bonus money, but <laughs> we won't bring it up. <laughs> this time a little full, a lot of, a lot of full, I guess. Wow. One, eight, nine. But he's on a strike. Spread equal plus the five pin. Always helps with the five pin in there. Cut that one too well. You're right. Cut it in front of the five pin. Good seven fill on the strike though. Has to settle for the nine. 55 through four. And here's what happened on the spare attempt. Three pin right in between the two and the five and then finally tripping over the four pin. Paul Berger working on a spare. In the pocket, but wow. Thin hit of six. Five, seven, eight, and nine. Triangle plus the seven pin. Ten for Paul. Again, though, he knows Mark Gregory having a a mark each time up there. Paul's got to try and keep pace because he trailed by 20 coming in. Doesn't want to have this get any further out of hand. And there is a way to hang in there. Paul Berger with his second strike of the day so far. And we have just about reached the halfway point of this match. Mark Gregory in the lead. Paul Berger trying for three wins in a row. We'll be back. Back we are at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. So glad you could join us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Don't forget, next weekend we'll be here, as always, Saturday at noon for Candlepin Skins, Christmas Day at noon for Stars and Strikes, our championship match here in Wyndham. Three, five, seven, and nine. Take, take. Oh. And an eight box. 63 at the halfway point, second game. Still leading by 29. However, Paul Berger has a strike working. Mark with a uh, halfway score here of 208. Had that big 145 opening game. In the pocket, and can he carry it? No. The nine pin stays up. Hey, watch out. <laughs> Ooh. Still got room to get by. 
Oh, that piece of wood is rolling back. A now, you still can get, get by it, but not much room. Yeah, to hit that wood at all would probably ruin the shot. Ruin the shot. And he gets by. Perfect. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Threw that ball like the wood was never even there. Oh, I'm that's, sure. I was just going to say, Dan, that's 10 marks already for Mark Gregory in just 16 boxes. Paul Berger working on a strike. Move that three pin a little bit. The wood to the right gives mm -hmm. him a chance of sweeping everything from right to left on the three and four pins. Let's see. Oh, he's a little high. Oh, got it. it. <laughs> got away with it. Spare on strike for Paul Berger. No emotion to, out of Paul at all, so maybe he was playing that a little higher. Trying for bonus money now, though. Make it three in a row. He's going to have his favorite leave. No. <laughs> Seven, ten pin goes out of there. Just the one, three, and six. This for $25. Outside? Nope. Paul looks real sharp at times, and other times uh, he missed that one, the six, eight inches to the left. And then he's right back in it for the 10 bucks. So the lead is 10 right now, plus Mark's fill on this spare. Seven, but not a spare leave. At least not an easy one. Three, four, six. Might be two ways to play this. Might try it on the inside of the three pin to try and deflect over into the wood. Nope, he was going at it the conventional way. Nine bucks. 89 through seven. A little behind his first base, first game clip anyways. When he opened with a 145, he's at a 119 clip now. Pull that one to the left. Just three. Just missed the head pin. You know, I think if he touched that head pin, he might have made that spare. But two, two open frames for Paul Berger to work on. Eight. So a nine and an eight for Mark Gregory. Paul has a chance now to wipe out that lead of 17. Actually touched the head pin with that first ball, but didn't knock it down. Well, got some help there on the one, three, six, and eight pins. Oh, nope. Too full on the head pin. He'll have to settle for a nine box in the seventh. Catches the head pin that time. Love to see that five go over. <laughs> it's a rocking, that's for sure. It's gonna stay rocking too. Wood on front, and gets it. Just able to throw it over into the seven pin. Kind of a delicate shot really with all the wood there. Just enough to nudge the seven pin. match very close to being even again as we move to the final two of game two. In game one both bowlers finished with spare strike and Mark is probably thinking that would be a nice way to finish this one as well. Light hit wants the seven pin to go. It's not going to but possibilities with it two pieces of wood. Mark had $50 in bonus money in game one. There's been 
No bonus money here in game two. Mark stepped back for a second to just look at this again. The piece of wood in the back moved again also. Actually missed the three pin, but that was taken care of with the wood. The nine pin is still there though. And I think that was the way to go, because I think if you were on the three pin heavy, you would have went right to the sidewall and missed the 10. But regardless, he's open in the ninth. So he'll move to lane 31 and hoping to put up some kind of a mark here to maybe preserve his lead. Well, there goes the three. Good break there. And another one with the wood turning. It is way out in front though. Yes, and it just turned a little more to being uh, almost straight across the lane. Got it. Ooh, just yeah. enough. Just enough of an angle. Waiting in the wings, Glenn Shattuck from Concord, New Hampshire, our number one seed. Be in championship week next week. Against one of these gentlemen. That's right. 117 plus a ball. And it's just four. The spread eagle, 121. So a two game total of 266 for Mark Gregory. And uh, Paul Berger will have a chance to take the lead here if he should catch fire here in the last two. Working on a spare right now. Oh, oh no. 189, just three. Each bowler's had an opportunity at that shot. Spread eagle plus the five. And Paul gets his 10. Every pin critical here. The deficit right now 12 as you see and he's opposite a spare four so he could even pick up some ground here if he were to mark. A little heavy in that pocket, but it worked out for him. Paul's favorite pocket, that Brooklyn side hit, especially, Dan, it seems on lane 31, he's been getting this carry. Uh, got a good carry with the seven pin and then finally tripping the six for the strike. So anything over a four fill, he's gonna cut into that 12 pin advantage and probably be in the single numbers. Oh, oh look out, hey, double hey, strike. Well, it won't, hey, help him as, lead. it won't help him as much as if he had done it in the middle of the game, but it could help him enough to take the lead in the match. Could also give him $250 if he were to throw another one. Seven or better on this ball would give him the lead. 135 plus this ball. Of course, another strike is $250. Looks pretty good. Oh <laughs> no, that piece of wood, that piece of wood looked like it went right between the four and the seven. But a strong finish for Paul Berger, and he takes the lead in the match by two, 268 to 266. One of these guys is going to the championship next week. We'll find out who after these Brett messages. All right, third game, two pins the difference in this match. And here's your leader, Paul Berger. One, three, six is all right, but he also has that five pin in the back. With wood, though. Oh, no, too full on it. Well, at one point early in that second game, Paul Berger was 30 pins behind, but he now has a lead by two. Paul has thrown five strikes in this match. Make it six. That was a quick one. Actually, let me correct myself. That was his fourth, fifth strike. 
He had three in the middle game, including the two in a row in the last box, and then he had one in the first game. So that's four strikes for Paul. Mark pulled that one badly to the left. The four horsemen right plus the five and the eight pins, a piece of wood between the five and the eight. Lead remains at two pins for Paul Berger. However, he has a strike already posted in the second. Each bowler with 11 marks right now. Good bowling by both. And there's oh. a strike. Mark Gregory gets his third strike of the day and he matches the one that Paul Berger puts up. There you see the replay in the 1-3 pocket. Will the five pin go? Well, of course, we already know it has. Paul Berger on a strike, four horsemen plus the nine. And no, on the seven pin. It's still there for a nine box. Well, Paul's pattern has been to uh, roll his best game of the three in the last game. If he does that again today, he'll have something in the 140s at least. <laughs> yeah, and well over 400. One, seven, and eight. No. Well, maybe. No. <laughs> so two opens for Paul. It seems that each bowler can't quite throw that knockout punch. 10 for Paul, 47 through 4. As Doug said, two open frames for Mark Gregory to work on and possibly regain the lead. Trails by two. But he is working on a strike. Off target, but he does kick the seven pin out. For the spare. No, too heavy. It'll be just a seven fill. So he actually loses two in count because Paul had to strike nine. Can take one back with the 10 box. No. So the lead is four right now. But again, another opening here in box number four. The runner up today gets $250. The winner returns next week to go for the big $1,000 check and the spot in the Tournament of Champions against our number one seed, Glenn Shattuck. Two, four, five, seven. Four pins in the left hand corner. Yes, spare in the fourth. That could very well give Mark Gregory the lead when he fills it his next time up. This thing is going to go right down to the wire, it appears. Semi-final match, a good one going between Paul Berger and Mark Gregory. Don't go away. Six boxes to go, at least. <laughs> the way this one is going, may need more. Oh, Paul Berger, big strike. That is strike number six in this match. He now has six spares and six strikes. Two this game, three including a double in game two. He almost had another double there, and he had one in game one as well.
interesting stat here in a second after Paul shoots at this 8 pin. He's got it for the spare. And Dan, that is Paul's first spare. He had gone seven boxes without one, but he had four strikes in the meantime, including a double. Uh, there's two big frames, the fifth and sixth. As you can see, strike spare puts a lot of pressure back on Mark Gregory, who's working on a spare in the fourth. Threatening to take the lead, but he's facing a two-mark situation by Paul Berger now. Important ball here. Oh, oh wow. No. A thin hit. He caught the head pin. It looked like he wrapped the head pin right around the rack. Didn't look that bad, but he only got four. He's got I, don't a recall ever, leaf. I don't recall ever seeing this leave before. No. Do you? The diamond to the right plus the, uh, plus the four seven. Oh, he almost made it. Oh, what a great effort that was. Hit the diamond full, kicked out the seven, and I don't know how he missed the four pin. He had everything going over there. So Paul Berger extends the lead. It's now 10, and here's what happened. Oh, right between them. Right between them, got the seven pin, left the four. Now it's really a must-mark situation for Mark. He doesn't want him to go too far away. And The 10 pin actually spun around a little bit. It did not fall over. Now he's just going to have to try to split the two and the four and see what happens. Got a shot at it. Oh, oh, again. My, oh my. Well, you won't see two better shots than the two he just made, and he has nothing to show for it. Grab 10, we'll let them go. Two great efforts on very difficult shots. He ends up with two 10 boxes, which in and of itself was an accomplishment, but it gives Paul Berger the advantage, as you see. 10 pin lead plus the fill on this spare. You can't afford to make any mistakes either. Ten pins is not many, and he doesn't want a bad fill, and he doesn't get it. So he gets an eight-pin drop, and this would be a big one, not only for the $25, but continually put the pressure on Mark Gregory. Bonus money riding, and he's got it. $25 for Paul Berger as he gets in the bonus money column from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Mark Gregory has $50 already. Paul Berger quickly on the spare, and he's full. Well, he flinched a little there. Just a five fill. A little opportunity for Mark Gregory, but Paul is closing in with 400 triple. Very well could have two 400 triples. Nine box for Paul. Yeah, Paul Berger will only need one more mark, probably, to hit 400. Mark Gregory will need... Just about mark Probably out. three at least, yeah. And he may need three in order to uh, make sure that he has enough to beat Paul Berger. Paul is certainly going to be over his 382. No question about that. Again, he crosses over in that one-two pocket, and that ball hits the one, the two, and then it goes right to the sidewall. Doesn't really get a good mixing action. But he's got a piece of wood out in front. It's going to be shooting at the six, seven, and nine pins. Three pieces of wood in between. The six and the wood should do it. Oh, oh we missed want. the wood. Yeah, he wanted to catch some of that wood. So that will put the lead up over 20. It's a 10 box. The lead goes to 23, but the good news for Mark is He's working on an open frame here. Yeah, 23, that's three marks away from your opponent. It's one thing if you have three boxes left and they don't have any, but Paul Berger <laughs> still has two boxes, so could be more. Mark has just got to put a mark up here. And, and he's not going to have an easy one. The one, three, six, four, and seven, and no wood. Puts him in a double strike situation and at the mercy of Paul Berger. Paul's going to have to help him a little bit if he's going to come back now, I think. 
Going to the final two, the lead is 24. So that means if Paul Berger is able to knock down at least 17, that would force Mark Gregory, as Dan said, to hit the double strike to catch him. Well, there's eight already. The three and the 10. Nope. It's a nine box. 118 with one to go. Call it 386 right now. He's thinking of Mark, and it's not to want to hit 400. It's just <laughs> a mark to get him further away from Mark Gregory. Full horseman, he's had plenty of shots at this. Looks pretty good. Yes, oh, big shot. Well, he must have a certain amount of confidence shooting at that shot, I would imagine. A little scary on the 10 pin here, but it goes out. That is 15 marks in this match for Paul Berger. He's had six strikes, four or more for 400. There it is. Add six more for a 134 and a 402 for Paul Berger. And more importantly, he has put Mark Gregory in a must double strike situation. And Mark is taking a look at what you're looking at right now. He's checking out the scoreboard to see exactly what he needs. And what he needs is 40, actually he needs 50 pins to win the match. 49 would send it to overtime. So he's got to have at least a spare here and then hope to throw a triple strike on top of it. Still there. Just take this down with the spare. Come on. Turning it over. And that will do it. Paul Berger has won his third in a row. And he will try for the sweep next week against number one seed, Glenn Shattuck. Nine box for Mark Gregory, who's going to have a pretty fine three game total on his own, but this dry spell at the end has cost him. He's gone the last uh, five boxes without marks. And of course, now no. you can hit him anywhere. Full, you can miss them, they're going to go. After it's mathematically over, they seem to just to topple. Well, hey, let's have him hit a couple more. He'll win 250 extra there you, dollars. There you go. He's already got $50 in bonus money. He'll take home $250 as the runner-up in this match. They get two. Nope. So he'll go instead for his 15th mark of the day. But the difference really, that big double strike. He gets the mark in the 10th, 116 and 382 for Mark Gregory, just a 20-pin victory for Paul Berger as Mark Gregory is the one who gets the 382, and it isn't enough. But really, that double strike in the 10th that gave Paul the lead, and then he had the marks uh, consecutively in that third game in the middle right there to put it away. So Paul Berger wins his third straight. We'll be back to talk about it and have the bonus ball contest in a minute. Welcome back to Stars and Strikes. We're running short on time, so it'll be a quick visit with Mark Gregory. Just long enough to say uh, $250 plus $50 in bonus money. Congratulations. You, you run into a buzzsaw with oh, Paul. Paul bowled real well. He's carrying the extra, uh, making the shots when he needed them. I uh, got a few bad breaks in there. <laughs> a couple shots I thought I hit but didn't get, but uh, no, Paul bowled real well. 382 usually good enough, but not today. Mark, congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank we'll you. see you again soon. And now Paul Berger for the bonus ball contest as uh, we'll go for our second winner in a row. We're back down to $20, and uh, remember, if it's a match, you win the, the money, plus a brand new set of bowling balls, and it will be, oh, look out, may have it all. Yes, it'll be a strike for Paul Berger. Let's see if we have another match. Not a match. If those two pins had stayed up, we would have had one, though. The guess was eight for Grace Rita, or Grace Rada from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. 
Grace, uh, you'll be receiving a consolation gift in just a time for a quick visit. Congratulations. Three in a row, had them all the way, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Not really. Uh, you know, it's, again, the, the double at the right time. Right. And uh, then he, he had a couple of shots that were really strange. I mean, he threw the ball well, and I was lucky again. Well, you're in the position you want to be in. Uh, chance for the sweep now against Glenn Shattuck. Well, we'll give it a good shot, I hope. <laughs> right, we'll see you next week, Paul. Thanks very much. We're looking forward to it. We'll join you next Sunday, Christmas Day, here from Stars and Strikes. And that will be for the championship match. Don't forget, we'll have uh, skins from the Londonderry Bowling Center Saturday, Christmas Eve at noon. Until then, for the whole crew and for Dan Murphy, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great week, everybody.